Hi there, this is David, and welcome to 5 Things That I Wish That I Knew Before I Started Up Chained Echoes. This is easily the best indie game to come out in years, and I just can't stop playing it. It takes everything that I love about old school SNES JRPGs, cuts out all that fat and the backtracking, and combines it with some fresh new takes, an interesting story, and fun characters. But it does seem like information and hints and tips are kind of hard to come by for now. So here are my five best hints and tips for having a blast with this great game. Number one, learn skills first. Each time you get a Grimoire Shard, you have a chance to either learn an active battle skill, a passive skill, or a permanent stat increase. I would highly recommend learning active battle skills first before ever touching the stat increases. This is because active and passive skills only gain SP whenever you have them equipped. And you, of course, can't equip them if you don't even have them. You're going to be gaining SP with every battle that you fight, so the earlier that you learn these skills, the better. But do remember, not all skills are created equal. Try to get a variety of skills on each character so that you're able to cool down the overdrive gauge more efficiently. Once you get a good variety of active skills on the characters, then you can move on to some really good passives, but ignore those status ones. They suck. Then once you have all that done, and only then, you can move on to those stat increases. Number 2. Remember the bonus board. Sometimes it's easy to forget that the bonus board even exists, but it's actually the easiest, quickest, and best way to level grind in Chained Echoes. If you're grinding on random monsters for SP, then you're doing it wrong, girl. Use the bonus board instead. Not only will you gain much more SP and gold by completing each tile than you would through regular encounters, but even more importantly than that, you can actually gain Grimoire Shards on the bonus board, which allow you to learn more skills, and it's the only way to get Sacred Water, which is required to activate those class statues. Just remember, you actually have to go into the board and press the X button to claim those rewards. Just getting them isn't enough. They're not automatically going to come to you. So what I like to do was go through the story, and then once I reached like the next area, I would go back to the previous area and the steamroll everything to complete those bonus board challenges. Number three, utilize Rob and Sienna's synergy. While well, Sienna should be in your party at all times, in normal as well as boss battles for her overall utility, I mean she's able to slice and dice up entire random groups, steal, and attack single targets powerfully, our little archer with anger management problems, Rob, is probably better utilized just for the boss battles. But together is really where they shine. First of all, they both have access to damage of overtime abilities like Poison and Bleed, which should be set on bosses as soon as humanly possible to maximize their damage potential. Then, later, as you gain more skills, you can use Rob to paralyze enemies. Then use Sienna's Ninjutsu to deal three times as much damage to those paralyzed enemies. They just work so well together, and because of this, you are never going to want to group them together in the same formation. They are boss staples, so keep them apart so you can utilize them both at the same time to best advantage. Number 4. Keep the Overdrive in check Most of the time, the Overdrive Gauge is really only a concern during the boss battles. But boy, it is the difference between life and death there. Many times, you're going to have to do things that you don't want to do just to keep it in check. You might not want to waste the turn, but defending is better than going into the red. And then also, don't forget about those overdrive items. You can use those to really bring it down. And also, remember to constantly check with your reserves to see if any of their skills are highlighted yellow so that you can cool down the gauge that way too. I mean, you might not want to use the skill, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Because if you leave that gauge in red, you're gonna go down in flames and fast. Number five, play in the menu. The menu might look simple at first, but don't be fooled. Its simplicity belies its complexity. 
because there's actually a ton of stuff to fiddle around here with that's going to make your time so much easier. Whenever humanly possible, be sure to upgrade your weapons. The plus two attack or magic might not seem like much, but this is one of those games where every little teeny tiny stat point really counts. Also, don't forget about the crystals. Every time that you're able to, stop over at the blacksmith to refine those crystals and attach them to your best weapons and armors. Then, don't forget about the deals. Not only is it the best way to earn money, but they're also a great way to gain access to equipment before you would otherwise have access to it. And lastly, be sure to use up all that SP to level up your skills, increasing their efficiency and damage, while also simultaneously reducing their TP costs. So, that's it for five things that I wish that I knew before I started up Chain Echoes. What are some things that you wish that you knew before you started? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video and what I do here on the channel, please consider supporting me over on Patreon for exclusive videos and early access to my content, heading on over to Twitch for some streaming fun, or coming on over to my Discord to chat and hang out. The links to the mall can be found in the video description. This has been David, and if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.